My friend has a problem here with his 83300D Turbo, and we're going to try to solve it. The first thing we have to do is find out what is really causing the problem, and then we're going to have to repair it. And as I thought through this problem, I, I began to realize this might make a great video workshop series on how to diagnose a overheating and malfunctioning turbo diesel engine and then go through the step-by-step -step process of what it's going to take to fix it. Particularly, is it worth fixing it and is it something the DIY mechanic can do himself? Let me explain the problem. When he picked up this car, uh, he knew there was a problem with it because uh, there was, uh, it was losing coolant and there was an overheating problem. And right away, you could spot something was going on with this coolant reservoir tank. Look at the coloring on that thing. I mean, <laughs> it's a little dirty, a little rusty inside. And when he started driving this, he said, man, this engine runs great. But it smokes when you start it up, kind of a whitish smoke. And then it keeps overheating. So I recommended that he just pull the thermostat out. So he went into the thermostat housing, pulled the thermostat out, and started driving the car. And that kind of solved the overheating. I mean, it was it's still running on the high side of temperature. But he's actually been driving this car for the last month. And he's, he's, he says this is one of the best running turbo diesel engines he's ever been around. He's had a few of these things. It's a solid car. There's no rust in it. The suspension is tight. And he wants to fix it because it may not be a big problem. It's not going to be something simple. But what I've decided to do is do a video workshop series, which will be available later on my website. And the first thing we're going to do is to try to determine, before we tear the engine down, whether it's a head gasket problem or possibly a cracked head. If it's a head gasket problem, it may be something as simple as just putting in a new head gasket and bolting everything back up. But I've usually learned from these old cars that it's never quite as simple as it may appear. And you always have to be ready for Murphy's Law. I said, be prepared when you pull that head off the engine, you may not like what you see on those cylinder walls and it may be okay, don't go any further. But at least the commitment to take the head off, then we can you know, decide whether it's worth either replacing the head or replacing the head gasket. So over the next few days, we're gonna go through a few tests and I'll, I'll film those. We'll take pictures. We'll come back and do some videos on those testing and diagnostic procedures. One of them will be doing a coolant pressure test. Let's see if we can get a leak down and, what, and that may indicate for sure there's something going on with either the head or the head gasket. Then we're gonna do a compression test, a cold cranking compression test to see how much variation we're getting between the cylinders. And after that, we'll report back in either part two or part three of the video workshop. And once we determine that we think we know what the problem is, we're gonna go ahead and pull this head off. You'll get a chance to see us, you know, removing the head from the engine, inspecting the gasket, inspecting the head, and then talking about what the options are to get it fixed. I won't be doing a step-by-step, bolt-by-bolt instructional manual. This will be more a, uh, of a diagnostic uh, and tear-down procedure and then looking at some of the challenges you'll, you'll have to take on if you're going to try to, to do this yourself. So when this video workshop is available, I will post. I cannot change the video once I put it up on YouTube. This is the introductory video to this workshop but I will change the item description that you see below. And in that description, I will give you a link to where you can go to watch this multi-part series. There's one thing I forgot to mention that the owner did have to do to keep driving this car. Now, you won't be able to do this with all, all cars that develop this kind of a problem because it all depends on how big the leak is. If you have a big head gasket leak or you have a large crack in the cylinder head, the high compression of a diesel engine will force so much pressure into your cooling system that it's going to start blowing the cap. So you'll build up a lot of pressure, but for some reason, he was able to just come in here and drill a very, very small little hole in the top of this coolant reservoir tank. That just allowed enough of that excess pressure to escape without losing a lot of coolant 
to allow him to keep driving the car. Once again, you won't be able to do this in every situation. But in part one of the video workshop series, I will show you how we're going to hook up a tester to test the pressure inside the cooling system to see how much and how fast it leaks down.